Hey there guys, in the last episode we got a bunch of quests done and started work on our quarters upgrades as a secondary objective. Today we are jumping back into Fortuna 3, continuing with our quest lines that are going to require us to become the aggressor and engage other players in PvP while chasing a few items for some more quarters upgrades. Enjoy! Just quickly, the Frosty Frontiers event is currently live and Jaeger has gifted me some extra codes to give out for a free Advocate Assault Rifle uh, with one of the nicest skins you can actually get for it in my opinion. The Miracle Over Neptune Charm which came with a very interesting bit of lore giving insight to humanity in the 22nd century uh, around our solar system and lastly a few just salvage tokens. Uh, to use these tokens, jump into the game, go to the shop menu, hit R to redeem codes and enter one of the five codes I've given to you here. Hey there guys, welcome back to episode 3 of the uh, second frontier new player walkthrough or game, game play through thing that, that we're doing. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to be kicking things off with level 5 in all factions. Uh, we're going to be kicking things off by dropping down to the Bright Sands and actually looking for some PvP. So we've got a couple of faction missions uh, to be... I think it's Osiris. Yeah, I'm using the Scarab. It's been a couple of days since I last logged on, but um, <clears throat> could use the Scarab, uh, get a kill with the Osiris weapon, and then gonna end up using the Scrapper uh, and try to get a kill with the Korolev weapon. So these are our first PvP missions uh, for the the walkthrough gameplay thing. Um, we just have a couple other things that we got going on. Uh, these are optional quests, so I don't actually need to, to be doing them. We want to be doing this one. This is an optional quest, but it unlocks green stems. Um, doing the work part five is going to be our other one. So you want to be pretty much doing this and then trying to PvP along the way. We also need to uh, enter the East Collection Point loot room. So I reckon we're going to try work on doing the work part 5 to start off with. Spawned up in the waterfall labs. We're going to come down along this road all the way down to the comms tower. So for, for this mission here we can stash some radio equipment and circle boards. Uh, that's actually really nice for the, uh, the comms tower location because radio equipment and circle boards spawn there all the fucking time. So. <laughs> I'll see you there. Alright, so we're pretty much at the, the comms tower right now. Uh, we've, got, we've got two buildings inside of the comms tower area. This one here and this one here. Um, we need to stash our equipment at the back of this radio tower here. And so we're going to go and head up into the first building just over here. Through the main entrance gate here. There are a couple of ways that you can into the Holmes Tower here, but we're gonna go through the main gate. Um, there's a quick little stash, just chilling on the right hand side as you run in. Just over here. We're gonna run in here. Now you don't actually have to open this door to get inside. Uh, what you can do is you come around the back and you jump up these boxes. You can come in the back here, or even go up on the roof and drop down and in. Yeah. You can see we've got some circle boards right there. Ooh, an evac. There's actually people. <laughs> right, so we're going to need a few of these. Um, we need a two radio equipment and one circle board. We actually already have that. I, I picked up a radio equipment from... A, Thing, a luggage container back there earlier, um, but we've got some other stuff that we can loot. We've got some second ones right down there. Hello. <laughs> Alright, I can go to Alstrom then, I guess. <laughs> That's pretty much it for the, for the main building, so we're gonna jump out this window here and run along the fence and then cut through this way. It's the easiest sort of way to get around. Now these, these like containers here, um, pretty much one of the 
only, I think it's like one of the only real two locations you can find aluminium scrap on bright sands. The other being base camp. Uh, not that we're we're at that stage, but it's just a interesting bit of information, I think. A little heavy converter for our sniper rifle. Find some weapons on these desks here, so it's, it's worth looking. Uh, I think a mate of mine found a brute upstairs at one point. I think the best I've found is a phasic lancer, so. <laughs> you also find data drives here. There used to actually be a an uplink just over there. Unfortunately, it's been taken away. Um, still not too sure why, but you can no longer. Great data drives at the, uh, the comms tower. Alright, well there's a bunch of loot laying around still, but we're gonna go out the back here and we're gonna... We're gonna deposit our stuff. That way that drop is done. So the dead drop is at the back of this big old comms tower, radio tower thing. Now you got two red equipment and one circuit board. Wrong dead drop location. <laughs> Okay, well that's another dead drop location. So the other one is uh, over this radio tower here. Um, see it? It's like over there. So to get there without angering those mobs, all you have to do is just approach it from this side, uh, which you can do quite easily by climbing up there and then just walking up. Actually, we'll go over and I'll show you this uh, jump up location here. So, a lot of the time you're going to be approaching the comms tower from the uh, the swamp and rock pools area, so yeah, you'd be coming up here, you run it up this way, you go, oh shoot, the gate's closed. So all you got to do is just run up over through these bushes here, to this ledge, climb here, climb there, done, easy. You can crawl through that little uh, opening in the fence. I'll go around here and jump up, or run that way, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but this is the actual dead drop location we, we gotta go to. Then when you're at this radio radar dish, what you wanna do is you wanna come over to these stairs here, run across them just down to the left here, like that. And if you didn't know, you can shift and right click to uh, transfer one out of a stack of items. That's what I was doing there. Works for dropping like that as well. Alright, so we haven't heard any shots. <laughs> and we haven't. Oh, I can't lie, we, we have one evac. Uh, at this point, could get out and reset. Or we could go over and, and do the uh, puzzle. And I'm thinking I'm going to get out and reset. Ooh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Evac's right there. Okay, that, that allows the next raid to focus purely on PvP, depending on what the uh, the, the next thing is for ICA, actually. But, yeah, we're going to go over and we're going to do the, the puzzle at the Eastern Collection Point. Alright, we're at the Eastern Collection Point, and if you didn't know how to do the puzzle, and as I said with the other ones, I've got the uh, guide on how to complete every single puzzle. The bright sands, I'll throw it up on the screen again if you need it. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be right back when I'm opening up the loot room. Alright, that is the puzzle completed. We've got the, uh, the storm coming in. I've just called the Eva. I may or may not actually make this. As uh, quick, gonna complete while we can. Alright, we got some uh, some good stuff out of that one. The the Maelstrom, got some Smash, and we also got a uh, miniature reactor, heavy extended mag, and a couple other bits and pieces. What was the key we picked up? Loose house key. Alright, very nice, very nice. So, unfortunately, we only had the one uh, evac, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go hand in the 
I see a jump, obviously. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I did pick up enough combat metal sheets for uh, Water Tool Part 2, so I might hand that in as well. Ah, hello, Prospector. Doing the work. Completed. Ah, thank you. Now we need to enter the house on stilts and get a blue tier 3 data drive, so it's actually going to work out quite well with the drawing Good. and PvP, so we'll pick up a data drive there. Ooh, we could have actually picked up that tier 2. We still have a tier 2. I think we need it for something to do with the hideout. We'll, we'll check that out shortly. Uh, we're going to hand in Water Tool Part 2, and then I was actually planning on waiting the the five minutes uh, and getting back into that same raid, because then we'll have the entire... Um, the, the entire raid to actually see if anyone's dropping down, push any shots, uh, things like that. Hunt Rattler's using uh, a Coral yeah, until weapon. Next time. It's something we can do quite passively uh, when we work on getting a kill with a Coral of weapon. We can do that with the Maelstrom or the, the Scrapper, so that is not what I want to go to. Alright, Quarters Upgrades. So we can get the Generator going. And six Spinal Bases for that, so we'll work on uh, picking up six Spinal Bases in there. What's our next? We need five compound metal sheets for our next stash increase, so we need five compound metal sheets and six uh, six spinal bases alongside hunting players down. Alright, so I'm pretty comfy with my loadout and, and everything I've got right now, so we're going to just throw everything back. We're going to wait <laughs> a little bit. It's going to wait um, probably another couple of minutes and then drop down and try and get back in that same lobby. Uh, while we were waiting, the k -Mark generator upgrade completed, so we're going to go for the next one at that. Alright, it's only going to get us increased k -Mark generator by 50, so it's fairly negligible, but um, I mean, we're not, we're not even really worried about that. We're worried about this on the left here, our yeah, upgrades. Uh, we need another five upgrades before we can upgrade our, our quarters level. We're going to need quarters levels for, for more stash upgrades. Um, honestly, this section here, like getting to tier 3 quarters and getting these stash, stash upgrades, is, is going to be quite quite large. Alright, dropping down to Bright Sand Solo again. Hopefully, we're going to get back into that same server. Um, and, and we're going to have the whole time to see if anyone's actually online. Um, if not, we've got a couple things we can work towards, but not, not really too many. Ooh, yes, I think we did it. So we've got that post-storm drizzle going on right now. Very good. Now, outside of our PvP kills, we're going to need six spinal bases for a quarters upgrade. Oops, I'm just called evac. So I've just heard someone huffing here, they're out of breath, they're jumping just here, trying to back away slowly from these striders so we don't aggro them and make noise. Good chance they heard me. There's also a good chance that the, the rain sort of helped me remain silent there. You see them running over there? No, oh, they're there. Just saw the glimpse of, oh, there's two. Just saw that silhouette. So, uh, unfortunately, we're going to be the aggressors here, which means I'm going to stray away from the uh, the challenge. They're running along the beach the whole time. So, I'm not sure what their plan is, but I've lost sight of them. So there's an evac right here that they could be going to, or well, they could be trying to do something else entirely. Running along the back side of the map, like along the shore like that, is very strange. There is a point at which they have to go in, uh, and, and that's coming up quite soon, but because I saw them so late, there's a chance that I missed them going in and they're in the swamp camp right now. <laughs> because they haven't stopped here and, and called this evac, then I think that they're probably going to the Rock Pills ev evac. It's a little tough because I don't want to actually get too close to them. But I don't want to miss them at the same time. Ah, there's birds. Cool. 
Alright, so we're on the right, right path. We are behind them still. So let's look at all the mobs down there. This is very confusing to play by them. I think the issue is made all the worse by me not even seeing what guns they had. Uh, if I, if, like if I saw they had advocates or brutes or cores or something like that, then I could safely assume that they're now heading into the jungle, but if they had like AR-55s and whatnot, then I'd be more thinking that they're on their way elsewhere. Alright, so I, I can hear the birds here, which means they did not come to the jungle, uh, which kind of fucks me, to, to be honest. I'm playing a lot more cautious because I've been playing so much freaking stalker. You just push those guys and shot when I had the chance. Instead of trying to actually uh, find a decent point to engage. <laughs> Alright, so if they didn't go to the jungle, then they had to go in. They were at the rock pools here, they could have gone to the power plant, southwest collection. But that's basically their move from there because they were traveling this way. From there, they're probably going base camp or filtering through the sides. So we should probably be heading to like the eastern, northeastern side of the map. Uh, cut them off. Listen for shots, listen for evacs, something like that. So we're going to go there because they're probably the only two people on the map in the game right now at this time. Oh, we've got some shots off to the north there. Need to go and investigate that immediately before they uh, disappear. Sounds like they are uh, above the north uplink, like here on the road. Could of course be wrong entirely, but that's about where it sounds like they could be pushing this way or yeah, or even back towards me. We got really three options here. Bunch more shots at 3:30. Sounds like it's in the dig site. The shots I heard were much closer. Oh, dude, come on! <laughs> no. That's still shooting a lot. Uh, maybe they're trying to kill the Marauder? Got this, the Meteor Core here, they're probably trying to evac. Come on, shoot now, shoot now. Well, two banners with names on it, so it was a duo. It's most likely the two guys that I was chasing all the way from freaking Swamp, dude. <sighs> I, I mean, that was a important lesson in, in tracking, but uh, in a normal server there would have been many more opportunities to engage with someone else in a fight. Yeah, it didn't even cross my mind. What they did was they, they went this way, uh, triggered the birds, either went th along here or split this way, come up to the comms tower, and then I'm thinking jungle, right? Go there, check there's no birds. No. What they did was they just ran all the way up here. Like that. Ooh, okay, we got a, like a scrap of the medical going on. Over there, that's big news. So I've, I've actually evac'd and uh, got into a new raid. Oh, right there, right there, right there. Uh, they're running to East Collection. Unfortunately, they are a duo. Oh, okay, so we've got two different teams here. Pretty sure I could have killed that guy just then with a the sniper, but it's not what we want. We either got two different teams, or this is a, this is a freaking trio. Which very well could be. I'm kind of waiting for them to um, <coughs> come out this door down here. See if that's going to happen. And then come out towards me. Um, I, I was hoping it was just going to be one. And we're out this way. Oh god, let's see me. There's no way they don't see me. Oh. 
<laughs> what was that? My gun was just like cocking and wouldn't shoot, dude. Sticks. He headshot every single shot. Good, well played, but I did ninety-two. <laughs> Oh uh, man, I don't know what that was with the uh with the <laughs> But um I, I think I played that pretty pretty standard, like how you should. Uh I mean that that was the only real play I had. I waited for the first guy to get underneath me, um and then shot the second guy in the head and then swapped to the gun that I needed the kill with. And unfortunately, I don't know what the heck happened there. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little lost with that one. Hopefully, we get one kill, that's all we need. Then we'll be swapping over to the Scarab. The Scarab, not the Scarab, Scrapper. It sounded like we had some kind of shot to 75 East up here. I'm gonna go and check it out. Pretty much gonna go on that same spot that we just died on. There's a chance that this is the same raid. <laughs> oh, dude. I think this is the same raid. I think this is this is the same raid. That's my scarab, that's my green armor. Alright, well I just killed the guys that, that just killed me, so... That's, uh... Not my bounty, but I will take it. Heck yeah. Wait, that's a lacerator, that's not a bounty, you muppet. Alright, I feel a little bit bad, because I'm... Why oh, I don't feel bad. I think this guy down here DC'd. Oh my god. So much stuff. Wait, is that, that's coming here? No. Did this guy not hear me just murder two people? What? I noticed earlier that I was fairly low on helmets, so that's actually huge. <laughs> Just got four helmets, is it? Yeah, four helmets. Yeah, well, that's the Osiris one done, and if that Lacerator was a KBR, then we could have had the uh, <laughs> the Korolev one done too. I didn't even loot this guy. I, don't... I, can, I can buy these things back if, if he has anything cool. Hey, he's got a Maelstrom. Now, while I'm here, I'm actually going to look for medical supplies, and if I do find one, I'm a little bit upset because I have no idea what to drop for it. <laughs> Not going to go any further than that, let's get out of here. Crap. Alright, we made it out of another raid, and we got absolutely fucking stacked out of it. And last raid of four green helmets, uh, got another Manticore, a Maelstrom, even got a single medical supplies, uh, which is huge. Absolutely freaking huge. So many blue slips. <laughs> wow. Okay, we've got two things done here. Um, Titan Hunter Part 1 and Field Research Part 4. Uh, field Research Part 4, completed. <laughs> Mark that has completed then. Yes, you do that. Right. Shit, I got a scarab. Uh, stash biological samplers in the swamp skeleton dead drop, and two weak med kits in the waterfall right. lab dead drop. So those are both things that we can find in raid when we uh, not really biological, but definitely the the med kits. You don't need to bring the med kits in. Ah, prospector. That should be easy for you. 
but not a part two is the liver fight type. Yeah. No, we got one yeah, from that guy that we okay. killed on the pad there, uh, so that's a step towards the completion of that. Um, still have a rather large imbalance of shields to the helmets. I'm gonna rock that, take three of those, take two grenades. Let's take our biological sampler because we spawn. Ooh, I can do both of those. See if I spawn close enough to the uh, the swamp. I'll chuck that all in there. Hey, big meteor strike immediately. All right, so jumping into a new raid, we've got a game plan. We need to visit the house on stilts, which is the house right next to the north uplink. Which the evac? <laughs> I think someone just left. Um, but that suits us quite well because we've got our data drive to do. We need to get that to tier 3. That's going to be our main focus. Now we do have evac down low here. So we might actually go all the way down here and actually stash the biological sampler. And the two grenades if I still have them at that point. Alright, this is the north uplink. I showed how uplinks work in episode 2. Basically chuck your data drive in there. The download progress I've done. Alright, let's do one to two complete. Now, we did have that duo spawn over in Woodcutter, and there's a high chance that they'll be coming our way. We made a lot of noise, we're still making. Yep, they're right here. Great, that's an advocate. Yo, what's up, boy? Great, let's go right there. He just saw me. So we've just been pushed off of our objective pretty hard. Uh, we got shot at by a suppressed advocate. <laughs> and we saw the other guy pushing over towards us. Oh. They're not together. Still one more, it's still the duo of the initial guy. It's underneath somewhere. By the sounds of things I am going to be out geared. He probably knows that, because I just killed a guy with the scrapper. Probably keeping an eye on the loot, which means he'd be down here. Yep. Oh, he's got a medical. Good night. I don't know why I just couldn't see him through the through the grass there. GG's fellas, that was that was a lovely little fight. Um, unfortunate we traded there. Ah, dude, I just couldn't see him through the through the grass. He really should have killed me though. I should not have survived either of those uh, engagements. But we got the kill with the Karlov weapon, so that's big. 
big business. It's good honest work, part four completed. So close. If I didn't swap to the to the blue armor there, I was dead and we oh he just would have got everything, so. So close, man. I had the advocate in my hot little hand so I could taste it. Alright, good honest work part five. We're gonna go retrieve the minor cams. It's a very easy, very simple mode, so. Alright, dropping into the jungle. That's actually perfect. Oh, come on, run, huh? So, good on his work part 5. Very easy and simple to do. I just go pick up three, three uh, body cams off of some dead miners. First one is literally right in front of me. So, I just come in here. We're going to kill one of these mobs first up. Do a little looting. Alright, so actually I need these spinal bases because I just lost mine. Damn. <laughs> I was hoping I'd have it all to myself for a little while. Uh, first body cam right here. I'm gonna take damage from that. No? Okay. Second one? Just over here by this little uh, crane looking forklift looking thing. Right here. Bodies, dead bodies. Need to kill this. Oh, hit me. Alright, and the last one is going to be in the uh, little collapsed mine looking area. I have a restoration shield on, so should be fine to restore the rest of that. In the back corner here, I'm gonna have that unfortunately. Not unfortunately, but that'd be annoying. I wanna kill that one, it's gonna take ages. Uh, there's the last one there. Oh, it's all three body cameras. Uh, they weigh five, so you can chuck them in. Is safe pocket. Unfortunately, only one. But I just realized I lost my biological sampler too. Quite unfortunate. They aren't exactly hard to get. Great, duo. But um, they aren't exactly common either. Alright, let's get the house on the stilts done first. That way uh, I can have the option of going somewhere else should I choose to. Okay, that's fun. Uh, I think that's a basilisk shooting at me. <laughs> it was a little, a little taken back because um, I, I just <laughs> thought about what I was gonna say and everything, and then I saw that uh, that's one of three <laughs> tier three data drives, not one tier three data drive, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. They're down there, I just saw them. Just saw a shadow moving down there. Uh, yeah, I, I had this big beach planned out because I realized that I uh, hadn't been talking about our, um, our game plan from the very beginning of the raid. And, and to me, that's one of the most important things. I started talking about it in episodes one and two, but I haven't really mentioned it so far. Um, and to me, I was, I was thinking about, well, okay, I, I've spawned in the jungle, I see my evac set. Wonderful labs. I've still got to go to the house on the stilts, and I've still got to do the tier three data data drive. Uh, so at that point, I've gone. Well, what else do I have to do? You know, like we, we're going to be here, and then we're going to evac. Obviously, we've still got our loot that we can go and grab, but uh, we could also go and do some other 
jobs maybe, some other quests. And I realized that we had um, two weak medkits to stash inside of, inside of the waterfall labs that dropped. So my plan was actually to go over there and uh, do that on our way to evac, utilizing our good pathing that we had thought about from at the very start of the raid. Dig site, do our stuff in dig site, come to the uplink, go that way to our dead drop there, being as efficient as we can. And then that happened. <laughs> yeah, so why am I at comms tower right now? So comms tower is a decent place to get data drives. Damn it. <laughs> I was hoping that was going to be tier three. Uh, you can find up to tier four here, I believe. Uh, I haven't found a tier five here, uh, which is the exotic, uh, exotic, legendary one. But I definitely have found tier threes quite consistently. The occasional tier four. So that's why I'm here at the comms tower, uh, just having a look around in the buildings for some for some data drives. I suppose we should do a bit of an anatomy of that gunfight there. Um, so I had the restoration armor on, so I would slowly trickle up health. Oh, look at that. There's another dive driver right there. Oh, we need some cables too. Very nice. It's all coming together. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> we got shot at by an advocate and then what I believe was a, a basilisk. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're two people, but you know, I, I started getting shot at. Um, because I, I picked up the data drive and I was on my way to the evac and I got a little sidetracked because the pop-up was not what I was expecting so I thought it was going to be one tier three data drive but it's three tier three data drives uh, which is why I'm at the comms tower looking for, for more data drives but um, that caught me off guard which drew my attention away from the guy standing literally in front of me uh, but luckily he wasn't that good with the advocate and he missed quite a lot of his shots um, Probably sprayed about 10 to 15 bullets at me, and maybe 10 to 12. I uh, missed a fair chunk of them, and I heard him sprinting after me uh, as I heard a basilisk shoot at me. Or saw the saw the uh, the blue bullet of a basilisk shooting at me. So at that point, I just had to run. There's no point in healing because I haven't done any damage to them. Uh, so my only play was to run. I already had a fair distance on them, maybe about 50 meters, and it was enough. We used that 50 meters to then create some doubt into what path that I could have chosen. Uh, if I could have gone left or right, um, they chose to go right when I actually went left, which got them off of my tail. When I felt safe, I used the stim, I uh, then sat up high, used the height advantage again, feeling safe to scout the area out, and I saw them, see them? seen them, uh, down just over here. They could still be in the area, that's for sure, but I feel pretty comfy in onto the other uplink and uh, doing that now. Alright, so here we are at the southeast uplink now. A very, very stupid mechanic <laughs> when utilizing data drives is that it's always going to prioritize putting in the highest rarity one that you have. So when you have something like what I do, a, a tier 3 that you want to hold on to and you want to place in a lower tier, you have to drop the, uh, the highest or higher tiers uh, of data drive than what you want to actually put in there. It's our third data drive done. I uh, didn't have anyone come challenge us this time. It's quite handy. If you guys are actually struggling to get your data drives on, then a, a neat little trick is actually that you can... Oh fuck, I'm going to the wrong evac. Um, a neat little trick is that you can actually do them during a storm. Uh, you might want to do this because a lot of the players actually leave when, when the storm comes because they don't really want to sit around and, and wait for five minutes for something to happen kind of thing so yeah it's a good time to actually get in and do your data drives if you are struggling with them.
I've been struggling with them and I was actually thinking about doing it. But uh, we, we got away with it this time. Actually, we also got our... We got our 10... We got our 10 Rattler kills with the Coral of Weapons. That wraps that optional side quest up too. Which allows us to, to move back to uh, an AR, to like a Manticore. Where I feel more comfortable with than using something like a, a Maelstrom or a Scrapper or a freaking Scarab, dude. Right, we got out, and uh, we, we got our three tier three data drives, and we also got our three minor cams. Got a bunch of spinal bases, a couple of strider flesh, uh, quite a few compound metal sheets. I know that this was one of the things I was after for. Uh, the, the quarters upgrades, same with the, the spinal bases. I feel like I need the strata flesh for the green stems, but I can't really remember, so I've got some of them. Got another loose house key, I'll end up selling that. Uh, probably sell the other one too, to be honest with you. But yeah, so doing away pack six, what a tool. Uh, ooh, it's with the same guys that. Ooh. <laughs> Those are the same guys that. We just killed and died to in the uh, the last raid at North Uplink. I swear that was a basilisk that was shooting at me, dude. Which is crazy, because they went from bulldogs basilisks. <clears throat> Let's hand in now. Water tool part three and good honest work part five to Korolev. And see what's next. Excellent. For water tool, we're gonna have to stash metallic alloys and hydraulic pistons. Again, it's an optional quest, so we're just gonna do that uh, passively. Good honest work. We need to get a shard slicer. Ah, okay. That's gonna be tough. Um, shard slicers I've generally only found in the jungle in Bright Sands, and I'm. I don't really want to go to. Wait, what do I have? Why do I still have to go over there for some reason? Um, I don't really want to go there yet, and I don't want to go to Crescent Falls yet. But uh, doing the work, part six completed. The ICA has more work. So we got Toxic Love unlocked. Good done, eh? uh, they require us to stash a tier three data drive with the comms tower, along with four smoke grenades. Um, if we find that and we're there, we'll do that, but we're not going to go out of our way to do more freaking data drives. But for part 7, we need to go to the power plant, kill 8 creatures at the power plant, and deliver 5 fusion cartridge batteries. It gets some mine access key card, a bulldog, and remember, some other stuff. And at this point, I have finally remembered that I should be claiming... Wait, that's locked, dude? Okay, well, if you bought the battle pass, obviously I did not. Um, there ain't three orms. There are no free orms. Wow. All right, we'll have forty days to get two hundred orum, which I I think I can get done. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get that done. Let's go check out a couple of our quarters upgrades first. So obviously us wanting to get to 950 uh, Aurum here is going to be a big factor. Because that's going to be unlocking quite a few things for our battle pass. Um, I'm not going to claim anything till like at the very end. I'm just going to claim skins and, and stuff because I'm not really interested in any of the loot. Um, I'm not even really that interested in the skins on this account either. But... <laughs> Yeah, so we need, is that 950 Aurum? We need 200 more. I think we get it at a rate of 0.2 per hour, so that would be a thousand hours. And at 43 days, that's a little over a thousand hours. <laughs> so even at the base rate, we should get it. Um, but unfortunately, those XP rates are, they got 10% XP boosts. Uh, actually locked behind the, the battle pass, which I find kind of scummy, but it is what it is. Alright, we're in the swamp. Um, 
<laughs> I didn't really think about any of our other missions. So we've got the cables, we've got the medical supplies. So first off, we're going to go up to the medical outpost up there and check for some medical supplies and maybe a biological sampler. Clayton or one or two. So we need the shard slicer. Ah, we need to go to the power plant and hunt creatures at the power plant. Mm. Alright, so we got kind of lucky with the, the spawns for, for the power plant here. We only got four. I just had a bush rustle. Kind of freaking me out a little bit. We're gonna gonna leave it. We're gonna make a wave to the comms tower. I'm uh, gonna have a cheeky look for a tier three data drive. Oh, we're in there. And then we're gonna make a way to the jungle. Uh, the way our evac is located, got it over at Waterfall Labs. So it's kind of good for for us if we're gonna do a loop inside of the jungle to try and uh, evac efficiently. It's a little thing about having like world spawning weapons like this AR-55 here. Uh, if you see it and it's going to be an area that you're going to be uh, traversing quite a lot, you should just pick it up. Pick it up and drop it. And that's because if it's there then it'll never respawn a new gun. But if you actually pick, pick up the gun and, uh, and drop it then it's going to despawn and you're going to respawn a new gun. So the next time you come through that area, it's going to be a different gun to the R55, uh, and who knows, it, it might be something that you want, so. Alright, so coming into the jungle from the comms tower here, where we want to go is to the jungle camp. There's a few little items in there, a few coolers, a few lockers and things like that, that we want to get access to to look for a shard slicer. Best way to get there? Just run straight at it, pretty much. That's coming into the jungle camp. We actually have someone here. There's two people here. Three people here. So I think there's four. This is a trio, dude. I'm not entirely sure as to what the frick just happened, but uh, that three man squad just backed off back over towards the bombs base. It's a good chance that if they did come across the shard slicer, they just left it there. And these guys are coming up. Yep, they're going down there. They're looking for focus crystals to mine down there. Let's see me. That's the advocate we heard earlier. So if we hear some gunfire a little later on, uh, it's going to be those guys fighting the, the trio. So uh, actually having all these guys be here, there's some fusion cartridge batteries there that we're going to grab, but having all these guys here is actually quite handy for myself, um, because they, they came and they killed everything for me, so I didn't actually have to make any noise, I didn't have to anchor any of the, uh, the Jeffreys that are going to be floating around this place. I could just come, I could just wait it out for a little, and uh, then I got the place to myself. It's quite nice of them. So in the jungle camp there's actually a stash over here. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. Uh, it's not looking good for us. Alright, from here, question is, do we go to the crash ship? So, inside the crash ship we have a bunch of just loose construction items and stuff. Hey, just the stash. Um, it's a, a chance at any medical loot. It's 
more the question. Alright, they're out of here. I'm gonna go up to Brooklyn Labs, uh, have a look around, try and plant my two weak medkits, have a look for the biological sampler, and maybe look at the woodcutter camp for a shard slicer. Let's quickly go stash these and then come back. So the bed drop in the uh, Waterfall Labs is behind this desk here. Located on the map right here. <laughs> That's going to be quite hard to see, but this is the main hallway as you come in from that angle right towards here. Hey, another medical supplies. Huge. Alright, so we made it out of that raid again. We got a blue armor out of the stash of the jungle camp after narrowly avoiding uh, a two man and a trio. I <laughs> uh, got a whole bunch of loot, on the, including um, two medical supplies, a few cables. Just got to come in handy for our. Our next uh, quarters upgrade, it was those same guys again, man. You just keep running into them over and over and over. Uh, but we also went to the woodcutter camp and grabbed a few uh, sample containers. I think we got four out of that. We got four? Yeah, we got four sample containers. Massive. Uh, stayed during the storm. Got some... Got some charged spinal bases from a few striders. Uh, and... Yeah, we've got belt site for the masses, part one done. Did we? What? Ah, that's the cables. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. We need those cables for something else. Forum and generator rate. That's what we wanted. Right. So, that all done. Uh, we're going to be on our way next to tier two orders. All we need is three ratless skins. That's going to be our main focus for the next raid. Uh, we are running out of stash space. Let's quickly go in and sell some stuff. Everything's looking pretty good. Don't have like any double stacks of any materials, so just get rid of that. And happy days. Let's buy some ammo. All right. So same spawn on the eastern side of the map. Okay, evax. We got the waterfall lab again. Don't need to go up there at all. Uh, can find cables and medical supplies there though, and also the biological sampler. So we are going to, to actually go there. Um, outside of that, we should be going to the power plant, and then Tom's Tower into the jungle. Okay, well that's fun. There's a guy just camping the tower the whole time. Right, good, got a wildly different spawn this time. <laughs> Ooh, got a decent evac location if we get what we want from the jungle. It'd be quite nice. So the plan is still relatively the same. We're going to go to the power plant, finish up those kind of, those kills that we needed. Uh, then we're going to go head on into the comms tower and then the jungle. Hopefully getting the, uh, the shard slicer from the jungle camp. That sounds like a lacerator in front of us. Oh, there he is up there. Oh, we hit him. He's shooting the... Rattler? The fuck? Quite confused. It's... This guy's got a knife. Lacerator guy trying to kill him? No, Lacerator guy's trying to save him. Time for us to... Okay, time for us to move on. It's actually perfect. Um, that drill being down on the map is going to give us a lot more free reign to do the things that we want to do without being bothered by anyone looking for PvP. Because they're going to be just absolutely drawn to that thing. 
Oh, it looks like last Rider guy and, and his mate are leaving. Alright, so we're coming up to the swamp. We actually had a optional quest line to do here, stashing pistons and metallic alloys. We're coming up to the key room, you can actually find quite a few construction items spawned. Here and there, but it looks like it's been oh, there's some alloys right there. Kinda looks like it's been looted. But maybe they just didn't want the alloys. The plan for this one is to just do it passively. So this is where the dead drop is. I need that actually. <laughs> so I got one. We we throw it in there as we go past. Over in this building here, we have a good chance of, of getting more fusion cartridge batteries, and from what I remember, you need something stupid like 30 or 40 of them, so. Not bad getting more. Look at that. It's got four more. <laughs> Too easy. So if you ever see that smoke there, that's a Ledium Drill. So a Ledium Drill is a very late game uh, piece of content. You basically call down the uh, a, a big space laser drill and it's going to mine out a vent. Uh, the vents are respawn after each storm cycle. And uh, the, the Ledium is used for a couple of different things, but mostly it's just money. Um, you can use it for a hideout. Uh, quarters level upgrade. Uh, there is also um, it also has a use in the forge uh, for crafting exotic ingots, which is also a very late late game sort of activity. Um, but yeah, it's very very good money. It draws in a lot of PvP. So if you don't want to PvP, simply avoid <laughs> the big red smoke in the sky. Alright, now that we're here again, there's a good chance that there's going to be mobs because there's a drill going on, so everyone should be there, not here. Luggage safe room key, very nice. Looting what we can down here for now. Check these uh <laughs> Hey there we go, baby. That's what we're here for. Got that shard slicer! Uh, we don't need to be here anymore. Let's just dip. There we go. Two shard slices out of that. Um, oh, we should be a lot of fusion cartridge batteries, but that is the drill leaving. Alright, we made it out of another raid. We got the all important shard slicer. Got a couple of smart mesh. Um, we got this three rattler skin we need for our quarters upgrade. We got a shit ton of fusion cartridge batteries. Um, Nearly all of the Titan ore we needed, alongside some brittle Titan ore for some more money. Found a bolty just in, in general. Then we got the luggage saver and key. In general, huge raid. Huge raid. We even got our first piece of aluminium scrap. Man, that is good, honest work. Part 6 completed. Let's go and finish this one up. Prospector. How can Coral have help? And then next up, we're going to have Coral have level up to 7. But. Visit the jungle and hunt creatures in the jungle. We've been doing that a couple times already now, so that is very easy for us to, yeah. to punch Everything out. Was okay. I'm going to go over to our quarters now and get this upgrade for the level uh, ticking. There you go, you got our quarters upgrade. We can upgrade that to level 2. Uh, first off, let's try see what we've got. We can upgrade the generator cam. Let's do that. Need some more nickel for the uh, inventory stash upgrade next. And then we need some metallic alloys. Uh, this is why I've been stacking the sample containers. They're going to be, be needed a lot <laughs> in the future. So very good to, to pick up some early. Uh, but yeah, let's get our quarters upgrade going to tier 2. It's going to be done in 46 minutes. And I think that is a great time to wrap up episode 3 of the new player walkthrough. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Uh, we've got a lot of stuff done. Um, unfo unfortunately, we're not really like powering through all of the quests uh, that I imagined we would be, but still getting quite a lot done um, in a fairly short period of time. Uh, I don't really have that much time to play. It's very late in the morning, very early in the morning for me right now. Um, actually, VPNed over to elsewhere <laughs> so you could get some more players in there. Unfortunately, that breaks my VoIP though. Um, I didn't mind doing it for this episode just because uh, it was going to be more PvP focused episode. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying the content so far, leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.